Dearly beloved, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we shall always be thankful to God for every other chance that he gives us to make a reflection. And he does it on purpose. And we are sharing about our risen Lord Jesus Christ. After he rose from the dead, the Bible does mention in the book of Acts that he spent 40 days on earth. And after the 40 days were over, the Bible says that the Lord Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. And so we share about the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is it of any benefit to us as Christian believers? Because the Lord Jesus Christ who spent time here on earth, the three years of active ministry in the physical, with the apostles, the disciples, the people that are called, and then afterwards, the Bible says that he rose from the dead and he ascended into heaven. And so we run back to the Bible. In the book of Acts of the Apostles, the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Bible says the following, that therefore, in chapter 1, verse 6 of Acts of the Apostles, they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now verse 9, that now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who, has, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Now, friends, this is the ascension story of our Lord Jesus Christ. He had to go because he had promised that he would go. In John chapter 14, he tells his disciples that the time will come when I will go and prepare places for you. And so as Christians, we read these portions with interest. This is Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verses 6 to 12 following there. And then in Luke chapter 24, verse 50, you read about the same. In Mark chapter 16, verse 19, you read the same, that actually he was taken up to heaven. Now, ascension story. To ascend means to go up. And he went up when they were all seeing, and the Bible portion is saying that these people gazed their eyes up into heaven. And they saw him go until the clouds received him. Now, this is a vital part of our redemption story. We, as believers, of course, in the Apostles' Creed, we recite the same, that he, was, he ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of the Father and that he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And so since we have that statement of faith, there are benefits that we find from this story because it is one of the vital parts of our salvation, of our redemption story. Now, these benefits of the ascension are crucial, they are life-changing for us, they are eternity. And so a believer that will believe that the Lord Jesus Christ went to heaven and that will come again will not live the same as someone who doesn't believe in it because he promises that as he goes, he'll come back and the angel is confirming the same, that this same Jesus that you see being taken up to heaven will come back the same way. And meaning, actually, when he comes back, this time he comes back as a judge, not as a savior. And since he comes back as a savior, as a judge, I mean, we have to prepare ourselves. And this is what we look up to as believers. 
that number one, that our Savior Jesus Christ is a reigning king over all powers in all ages. I mean in all ages because he says then, at that time it happened, and he's still our reigning king. So our Jesus is the reigning king because he went higher and above. And remember that we say our Father who art in heaven, he is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. And so he is our reigning Father. And in Apostles Creed we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Father who is Almighty. And his son Jesus Christ, who is the reigning king and over all the powers. And in the book of, in the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 20 to 22, I just want to read the way the Bible says it. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 20, we read and Paul says that which he worked in Christ, this is God working in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand side in the heavenly places. And verse 21, he says, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And so Paul was catering for the age then. He also caters for the age which is to come, which is now, and we still looking for the ages to come. And in verse 22, the Bible says that, and put, he put all things, remember, all things under his feet. And that's why he is our reigning king with all the powers that because God put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So friends, Jesus' ascension give us the power, give us the assurance that he's reigning. He's still king. He's above everyone. He's above everything. And so what a joy for you to know that you have a father that cares about you. What a joy that you have a caregiver who is over, over all things. And this gives us the security, gives us the confidence to continue even in this world that is full of tumult, that's full of trouble, that's full of anxiety, that's full of stresses. We still say, I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, who is the creator of heaven and earth. And I believe in his son, Jesus Christ. And we go on and on and on because he's a reigning king. And so my brother, my sister, this ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ is beneficial to us because we know that he is the reigning king. Someone who will just be lifted up, go up. The law of gravity could not hold him. The law of gravity could not bring him back. But he just sailed and went up to heaven. That power that he used is the one that we depend on, that he heals us, that he takes good care of us, and therefore he's the reigning king. Point number two, the ascension gives us, as believers, access to God's throne for mercy and grace. Access, praise the Lord. Access to God's throne. Remember every time that we're making a prayer, you say through Jesus Christ our Lord. And because the Lord Jesus Christ himself says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. And so we have access, friends. We have access. He is our high priest. In the book, in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 14, following, you can read entirely there. But the Bible does mention that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens and is you know, he is our everything. And so this high priest who is the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of, in the letter to the Hebrews, in order we're talking about we have access, he pleads with the Father on our behalf there. And can I read that seeing them, seeing them that we have a great high priest, Hebrews 4.14, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Now I urge you, to hold fast your confession that Jesus is the Son of God. And the Bible mentioned this very clearly without, without mincing words 
that he is the high priest. And verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. This is the part I was making. That we may obtain mercy and find the grace to help in time of need. We need God's mercy. We need God's grace during the time of, of need. We are always in need. We are always desirous. We are always groaning. We are always... But let us approach. We have access and the direct route is the Lord Jesus Christ. So his ascension gives us this assurance, my brethren, that he did this for your benefit. He did this for my benefit. And this is very, very critical. A high priest. We can now draw near to the throne of mercy and find grace. Mercy and grace. And so, friends, this is the point that I'm making, that Jesus' ascension into heaven gives us a benefit that we can have confidence in approaching the throne of mercy, that it is this confession from this that we can draw the strength to continue, that even when the world seems to be, you know, crushing us, so Paul says, but we are not, you know, we are not diminished, crushed, but we shall surface somewhere. But even when this physical body is gone, the spiritual body will rise up. And that's why he gives, Paul gives a detailed account in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, a long account of the resurrection, the resurrection of Christ, the resurrection body, the resurrection day. And so time will come that even when the body is crushed, the spirit lives on. So we have access, my friends, to the throne of mercy. And that is what we desire most during this time when you're still living here. And it was, this was spoken to the church then. It is still spoken to us today because our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, finally, um, two things. Ascension provides an advocate on earth whose presence is limitless. Yes, Jesus comforts because actually he promises a, an advocate here. Yeah, he promises a helper. He does mention this very, very, very warmly in the Gospels, in the Gospel according to John chapter 14, 15, 16, 17. And he does it that we have an advocate. And so Jesus comforts us. What a promise that he makes that while I go, I will send a helper. While I go, I will send a helper, a helper that will comfort you, a comforter, a comforter, a comforter. And so this is our advocate here. So his empowering presence is the Lord available to us through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the teacher. And so this is confidence for us, isn't it? This is life for us. This is opportunity for us to live for another day. And so, another thing that actually ascension gives us is, gives us spoils of Christ's victory, gifted leaders. You know, that when he ascended on high, he made some, many to be teachers, evangelists, apostles, you know? What a miracle that he has performed in our midst. That actually we share in this, that his ascension, the result of his ascension is these numerous ministries that we have that our Lord Jesus Christ tells us that, um, that he made some to be apostles, others teachers. And look, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. I just want to read it very quickly because time is not on our side. But to each of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says in verse 8, that when he ascended on high, hallelujah, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. He made captivity captive and gave gifts to men. 
Now this, he ascended, what does it mean? That he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who ascended is also the one who, he who descended is the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might feel all things. And he himself gave some, this is the point I'm making, he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, and some to be teachers. There will be a time when we shall be talking about these ministries here. And I promise that we shall talk about them. And this is the point that we're making that on ascending to heaven, he gives gifts, spiritual gifts to us. But in as much as he gives, he gives spiritual gifts to us, he gives us gifted men and women who are serving in these five offices. Now, what a joy to make a discovery of this, that the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ has this for us. And finally, Jesus' ascension keeps us longing for his coming back. As he ascended, now we who are still here, we long for his coming back. Fixing our eyes on the things above, as so says the Bible. So my brothers and sisters, Jesus' ascension has benefits that we dwell on. One, our Jesus is the reigning king over all the powers in all ages. That the ascension of Jesus Christ, number two, is gives us believers access to God's throne for mercy and grace. The reason why we, where we draw our confidence. And number three, ascension provides us an advocate because he's up there in heaven pleading with the Father on our behalf. He comforts us and he encourages us to repent, to live in accordance with what he desires. And number four, ascension gives us the spoils of Christ's victory. Gifted leaders, he gives us gift, spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts and gives us gifted ministers in the world. And finally, we keep longing for his second coming. And when he comes, he takes us to where he is and we shall be there. Now remain faithful, remain repentant, remain a confessing Christian. Don't lose heart. Don't, if there's anyone to backslide, it shouldn't be you, it shouldn't be me. If there's anyone to lose the way, it shouldn't be you, it shouldn't be me. And therefore, the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ gives us, is a pillar, is a pillar that gives us strength to continue living on, to continue sojourning on, to continue moving on, to continue trying on, to continue praying on, to continue confessing on and pressing on until we reach the goal that Paul puts that actually we shall get there. And may God bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>